There's a message and a clear vision. Westminster continues to spend billions on weapons which could destroy the world. Scotland should spend on social provision which could be the envy of the world. Well, last Friday, the co-convener of the Scottish Green Party, Patrick Harvey, and I took part in the launch of Yes Scotland. It's going to be the largest community-led campaign ever mobilised in this country. Already 15,000 people are backing the Yes Scotland declaration. Over 3,000 volunteers signed up to support the campaign. It's a party which may or may not have 3,000 members left. <laughs> I wonder if he counts amongst the, his number, my deputy, all the political editors of Scotland and everyone else whose Twitter pick was harvested and used in support. Hiya, for the sake of the interview, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, my name is Yvonne McFarlane. I'm Heather's auntie. I'm 40-something. I live in Paisley. I have two teenage kids. Uh, one's going to be 15 in August and the other one is 13. Um, could I ask, why would independence benefit them and their children in the future? Yeah. Right, well, first of all, uh, I want my kids to live in a country that has no nuclear weapons. Okay. None. Never mind them being just over 30 miles away from their doorstep. Because well, that's exactly where they are right now. Whereabouts is that? They are in Loch Long at Faz Lane. And as the crow flies, that's 30 miles away from Glasgow. And we are seven miles away from Glasgow. Wow. As well. I want them to live in a fairer society okay. because this society that we are living in right now is very, very unequal. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. This is very true. And I want them to have a chance of a better life. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm voting with my heart and my head and that's why I'm voting yes. It's going to be a yes. Because I've waited 50 odd years as a member of this party to get a yes, and that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a yes vote, and there's no reason to ask why. It's inevitable. I definitely think it's going to go to the yes. I was incredibly inspired by the way he spoke um, and made a lot of great points that I'm going to definitely going to look into further. Yet, whilst the gap in the polls is closing bit by bit, the Better Together campaign remains significantly ahead. If they're worried, they're doing a good job of hiding it. At the moment, and for as long as I can remember, the split has basically been two to one uh, for remaining uh, in the United Kingdom and for devolved powers within the UK. As is traditional, conference ended with the singing of Scots Wahi, a fictional imagining of a speech given by the Scottish King before his victory over the English at Bannockburn. Alex Salmond is no Robert the Bruce, clearly, but if he can do it, and he truly believes he can, what place in history awaits him? So, Avon, what differences do you expect or would you hope to see if Scotland was granted independence in September? Right. Uh, well, I would hope, well, I know that we would get a government for the people of Scotland that the people of Scotland have voted for. Right. And within that, we should have a fairer society where working people are on a living wage and not a minimum work a, a national minimum wage. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be sending any more of Scotland's sons and daughters off to any wars, illegal or not. No. Um, if you don't like Alex Salmond and the SNP, don't vote for them when it comes to the elections in 2016. But, you know, we're still part of the British Isles and we still fought and 
Your great grandfathers, my grandfathers fought in the world wars together. That will never change. But what needs to change is having a government that clearly does not work for the people of Britain, never mind Scotland. And I think the only way to deal with that is to vote for independence. That's it. What about, like when I spoke to you at an earlier date, you said about the university fees mm -hmm. would be scraped for would be scrapped for like the likes of my son going to university in eighteen mm -hmm. years time. Mm -hmm. What's what's your kind of views on that? Are you, you up for that? Oh, definitely. I I mean they have stated that they would have enough money to scrap fees. I mean, right now, people in Scotland that go to universities don't need to pay for the fees. What they, they need to pay for the books, and they need to pay, that's where you get your loans from. But actually applying to get to the university, we don't need to pay for in Scotland. We need to pay for that in England. <laughs> but the way that our budget works, we don't need to. But if we stay within the union, they're going to slash our budgets. They are going to slash them because the cuts are coming. And I just wish people would open their eyes to that and don't listen to the nonsense that they're telling us. We're going to end up with a privatised National Health Service as well. And what do you mean by that? Private company owning the health service. You'll need to pay for your treatments, you'll need to pay for your prescriptions, you'll need to pay to go and see the doctor. These things are coming and I just wish people would realise that. But we are such a small nation with such rich resources that we can do it on our own. We can set an example. We've got five million people and there's more people that live in London than they do in the whole of Scotland. We can do it on our own and we can have a fairer, better society for the people that live here. And it will shake up the Westminster government and hopefully it will shake them up enough that they realise that they have to change for the people within the rest of the UK. Because... I have no grievances towards the people of the rest of the UK. None. You've come to fight as three men. As three men you are. What will you do without freedom? Will you fight? <laughs> Will lift. All right. Fight and you may die. Run and you'll live. At least a while. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives? They'll never take.